Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. One of the biggest uh, questions that we'd like to answer in abrupt climate change is when certain tipping points will occur. And specifically in this video, I'm going to talk about computer modeling, the latest uh, state of the art computer simulations that try to determine when we'll have the, what I call the first uh, blue ocean event. So blue ocean event, um, I coined that term many years ago as basically being when there's no sea ice in the Arctic for the first time. Um, and in other words, practically no sea ice, which is less than a million square kilometer. Now, a lot of people in the scientific community, in fact, the consensus uh, believes that or thinks that the last remaining sea ice in the Arctic will be around the coastlines. It'll be ice that's almost like fast ice, which is frozen to the coastlines. But the latitude is fairly low on the coastlines of the Arctic Ocean compared to 90 degrees north, compared to the North Pole. So based on the behavior of the sea ice recently, um, I think that the last remaining sea ice will be circling the, the North Pole, um, you know, at the highest latitude, getting the least amount of solar insulation, et cetera, et cetera. So the question is, is when will we reach that state? So the CMIP-6 project, the Coupled Model Intercomparison Project, the latest state-of-the-art climate models, um, and I discussed them recently in terms of their um, what they could tell us about drought around the world. So now I'm going to talk about what they say about Arctic sea ice loss. And basically, they, the, the gist is the vast majority of these models shows that there'll be no Arctic sea ice in the summer um, before 2050. But, you know, how much before? And you know, one of the things is there's a there, there there's a lot you can think of the the fluctuation of the sea ice as you go down. You can linearize it, take an average, take the look at the trend, and there's a so that's a deterministic aspect of it. But there's internal variability in the climate system due to chaos. So there's there is fluctuations that occur, and we can get a handle on how big those are very well from the the models. So the best sort of number is about a million square kilometers. So there can be, you know, the trend line that we can determine might be two million square kilometers, but if the internal variability happens to drop it another one, then we reach our blue ocean event, you know, so there's gonna be a time spread when we would expect this to happen. So let's have a look at what the models show. Okay, so this is a fairly recent, uh, paper, you know, that came out, you know, the last month or two called Arctic Sea Ice in CMIP-6. So they look at CMIP-6 simulations of Arctic sea ice area and volume. And the models showed a widespread of uh, mean Arctic sea ice area, but, you know, they basically captured the observational, the observations within the ensemble spread. Um, you know, some models were much better than others, so those models were could be selected out to then give you more, give you predictions as to, you know, what's happening in the future. Um, and the models also give you a decent estimate of the sensitivity of September Arctic sea ice area to a given amount of anthropogenic CO2 emissions, to cumulative CO2 emissions, and to a given amount of global warming, so global mean surface temperature, for example. Um, now, the models still fail in some aspects. In other words, if a particular model gives you a good global mean surface temperature, then the sea ice area, it would expect that there's more sea ice area than what we would actually measure, what the observations show. And if we get the sea ice area correct, it shows that the mean temperature should be much, much higher. So the sensitivity is not quite right. 
but the models do generally show um, the first, the Arctic Ocean will become practically sea ice free. In other words, the sea ice area less than a million square kilometers in September for the first time before the year 2050. And that's in all of the four emission scenarios. Now the emission scenarios designations has changed. They're slightly different from the RCP, Representative Concentration Pathway um, scenarios that are used in the IPCC reports. Okay, so let's have a look at the uh, data. Okay, so looking at the figures, okay, so this is basically the, um, this is basically what we have. Let me try to just center it here. Okay, cutting off the bottom. Okay, so what we have here is, this is um, March. So this is when the sea ice area is of maximum extent extent maximum uh, size and this is September when it's at its minimum okay so this is the sea ice area in millions of square kilometers here and this is the um, the two previous um, runs for IPCC and then the latest state-of-the-art models and there's 40 different um, models that are run those are the dashed lines and here is what the uh, the mean of the models is here. And these are the observations. Okay, so this is the observations. Um, this is over period 1979 to 1988 to give you a baseline. And this is the one standard deviation, the, the dotted lines and the dashed lines is two standard deviations. So 95% of the data is in here. Okay, um, and then in September, um, this is the uh, this is the observations. Okay, this is the actual observations, and these are all of the different models. So many of the models are you know are are around this particular the observations. Okay, now if you look at the um, if you look at the sensitivity of these models, the, how they calculate the, the the sea ice area to the CO2 concentration, the cumulative CO2 concentration in the atmosphere, then this is what the data shows about minus 2.7 square meters of ice lost in September per ton of CO2 emissions in the atmosphere. So you can see, um, you know, that particular number you know, the models are, are, are overshooting that number in most cases. And here is the, 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 the slope of sea ice. This is derivative, basically, d, d, dx dt, you know, sort of thing, the, the derivative symbol. This is sea ice area over, this is basically the slope or the change of sea ice area with global mean surface temperature. And what you can see is you lose about a 4 million square kilometers of sea ice in September per degree Celsius rise in global mean surface temperature. So this is the data and here's what the models are showing. So some of the models are capturing it, but not a lot are missing it. This is the sea ice volume in terms of thousand, in thousands of cubic kilometers. And uh, we just have it for CMIP5 and CMIP6. And uh, you can see uh, that you can compare the different models, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so now if we look at, uh, let's look at the, some more of the data here, the next figure, if I can find it here. Okay, so these are the projections. So you've got the models, you run them on a baseline, you try to, to uh, get, a, get a close fit to global mean surface temperature, to the cumulative CO2 in the atmosphere and uh, calculate the sea ice area and sea ice volume in the different models. And then you use them for projections. So this is a historical data is the black line. This is sea ice area um, plotted versus uh, cumulative CO2 emissions here. And, also, and with surface temperature change, global mean surface temperature change here, and then by year. Now, most people most papers and, and people plot by year. Okay, so these are the different historical and these are the high emission scenario, lower emission scenarios. Okay, so what you can see is, um, 
you can see how uh, in March, this is in March when the sea ice is maximum, there's a significant drop, but it's expecting, the models are expecting that there's still some ice up there um, in, in, in March, um, you know, as you go forward in time. Uh, September, the minimum, it shows the, these curves here with strong drops. So you can figure out the total cum cumulative CO2 emissions in gigatons where the sea ice goes to zero, the ice area, this is 1 million square kilometers so less. So that's counted as, you know, practically ice free. And you can see, you know, what temperature change is required. So, on, you know, just un under from under two to slightly above two. And uh, this is the year. So, you know, by about 2050, you know, there's a there's significant chance, um, you know, many of the models show complete loss of uh, Arctic sea ice. And if you look at the, uh, you know, here's another view of the models looking at the, you know, this is all the models being run, all 40, and then selected models. Okay, those selected models, they fit well with the observations as what as to what has happened so far. So, so some of the models, you know, don't get that right, so they're left out. And this is the low to high emission scenarios. This is the highest, the 5 to 8.5, SSP 5 to 8.5. Okay, and you can see the what's expected in terms of cumulative emissions. Um, and this is the surface temperature changes for those given emissions. And uh, you can see a range here. You know, this is <clears throat> 1.3 to almost three degrees or so. And then from the, the, then you can get the year you would expect sea ice area to disappear or to be under the million square kilometers for the first time. And, uh, the, you know, there's not, a, there's not so much change difference here between the, the different emission scenarios. You take this one, the red one, this is 2020, well, the sea ice is still around, okay? But, uh, you know, the highest zone here, if you like, for this model would be about 2025, maybe, to 2040. So, you know, the next, uh, you know, the next decade or two. Okay. Um, okay, so that's what... Uh, what we what what we would expect now these um the models show a large spread for when the sea ice area is expected to drop below a million square kilometers but most models they show so they show you know sea ice free in september before the year 2050 at future anthropogenic co2 emissions of less than a thousand gigatons per CO2. Okay, um, and where where do those numbers come from? I can go up here. Okay, so there was a paper, and I'll talk about this paper in a future video, Knotts and Strove, 2018. They came up with a number. They thought there could be, they're, they're, um, from their observations, not models, it they came up with 800 plus or minus 300 gigatons required in order to get no sea ice. Now, this would be a range of from 500 to 1100. Um, you know, some of the, the computer modeling is showing maybe down to about 200 instead of 500 um, gigatons. Okay, if we have 200 gigatons at 40 gigatons uh, per year, that's only about five years and 1100 gigatons divided by 40 gigatons per year that's about uh 27.5 years okay so there's so basically you know the sea ice is on kind of a death watch if you like and um you know it it really remains to be seen uh, what what happens. Um, there are some negative feedbacks, which I'll talk about in the next video that have kept the ice there longer than some of us have expected. Anyway, thank you for listening. Bye for now.